Hello and welcome. It's Jennifer. So glad you're here. Today we are just having a little fun mixing and matching different products together. We'll be using a stencil set for most of my cards, but combining that in different ways with dies and stamps. I really feel the best way you can get the most value out of your products is to use them creatively as much as you can. And that's what I'm doing today. I really liked a particular cloud stencil, so I use that on almost all of my examples, but I do have a bonus card at the end. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. I just have lots of random tips to share along the way, and we'll start with this card. So I fell head over heels for this new Hero Arts Color Layering Cloud Stencil Set. It's actually two stencils, but it gives you three layers to create a really cool background. You'll see me use this a few different ways today. Now let's start out by just using it with ink for a normal cloud background. I have a piece of white cardstock and I'm taping the stencil, the first of the layering stencils, into the top left corner. There are many ways to do it. This is the way I chose to do it today. There are little registration holes on the sides of these stencils, which is really, really helpful in lining this up. So I have my stencil in the corner and I'm putting little pencil marks in those registration holes. I then will tape this in place. This stencil has the largest opening, so I'll do the lightest color of ink over it. I'm using a large Altenew blending brush, which I like to use when I'm covering large areas like this with one color. I'm applying a soft amount of Hero Arts Dusty Blue. You could use whatever inks that you want to here. I really like the blue inks in the Hero Arts family, so it seemed a good choice. So again, I'm just doing a light amount of this light color ink over the first stencil. Once I'm done, I can remove that stencil and move on to the second one. The second stencil in the set actually has two layers to it, the second and third layer. So I will use the registration marks to set or to line up the top layer of the stencil and I'll mask off the bottom. It has the instructions on the packaging so it's easy to figure out. But again, I'm just lining up my little registration pencil marks with the holes in this stencil. So there you can see that they're lined up and I will mask off the bottom half of the stencil using some masking tape. I appreciate that Hero Arts put these two layers on one stencil so it keeps down on the cost of the layering set. So on the top half of this, which is the second layer, I'm applying a medium color. This is Hero Arts Summer Sky, a perfect blue color. And once again, I'm going kind of light handed here. Now the cool thing about this is you could make a sky that's really bold and bright, or you can make one that's super soft. You'll see a few different options today. So now for the second half of the stencil, I just shift it up, line up the little pencil marks with the registration holes on the bottom of the stencil, put down my tape to mask once again, and over this I'll apply the same color of ink, but I'll go a little heavier handed. You could also do these cloud layers in different like um, sunrise colors. You can really have a lot of fun changing things up, but I stuck with blues for today's examples. So there you can see the beautiful result you get. Now I'm going to go ahead and do a sec second stenciled background here. This time I'm only using one color of ink to show you you do not need to have a lot of ink colors to do layered stenciling. So I'm starting out with Summer Sky, that same bright blue I used on the other half, but I'm going very, very light handed here. A very light amount of ink for that first layer. Now for the second I'll use the same stencil. This time I'm going light handed, but a little bit heavier than the first time. Still a light amount of ink. So if you want to use one color for layering stencils, I recommend going very light for the first layer, medium for the second, and heavier for the third. But here I'm going pretty light on all, just a little bit more each time, so that I end up with a softer looking sky. This just shows you that you do not have to have a lot of ink pads to use layering stencils. Just change up how much ink you put down each time. So there is a softer looking sky. There is the more bold looking sky. So many ways you can change this up with different colors. So you'll see me use several of these sky backgrounds throughout today's video. In addition to these sky backgrounds, today I'll also be using the new Hero Arts May 2023 My Monthly Hero Kit. I have used these for years in videos because the value is twice the cost, so it's a good way to build up your stash. And the kit mostly includes, includes tools that you can use over and over. So this kit includes a large 6x8 stamp set with coordinating dies, that large stencil, three ink pads, 
some embossing powder, I believe, and some specialty paper. So this is the classic kit. They've offered that for years. Now recently this year, they have started offering the premium kit, which includes everything that the classic kit has, plus additional supplies. In this case, you get some additional dies, three border dies. You get sheets of rub-ons, which are really easy to use. And then you also get some more specialty papers. So you'll see me use these kits throughout this video, but remember these techniques can be done with other products you may have. So this is the six by eight stamp set that's included in the two different kit options, and it creates really fun layering bike and kind of outdoor scene images. For this first card, I'm going for a one layered look using my cloud stencil background and doing my stamping directly on it. Because I used a soft amount of ink for that sky, I can just stamp on it and not have to worry about masking. I'm starting with the grass image from that stamp set, and I have it positioned about an inch from the bottom. I'll stamp this with different shades of green ink, getting darker as I go down. So this is not a layering stamp image, it's just a single layer, but I'm going to give it the look of layering stamping simply by shifting it each time and stamping with a darker color. So if you love the look of layering stamps or layering stencils, think of ways you can shift the stencils or stamps and use different colors or darker colors to get that layered look. So you'll notice that I also stamp each of these images a few times. The reason I'm doing that in this case is because it helps with the blending of the ink where it overlaps. So you don't end up with kind of a stripe look at the base of this green image. So by stamping multiple times, I get a better blending. And look at how it has the look of dimension, but I used a single image. And I did that stamping directly over our uh, cloud sky. I did that cloud inking light so that I can just stamp on top and not deal with masking. Now the bike images in this set are really e easy to use and so much fun. I am just doing basic stamping for each of the images. There is like a layering guide to help you figure it out, but these are easy to figure out on your own. For the bike itself, I wasn't sure if I wanted a light pooled colored bike or dark. So I started with the light ink and I just kept stamping until I was happy with the result. Don't be afraid to stamp multiple times to get a darker color and that way you can try out the lighter color first. So I'll continue to stamp the different layers of the bike. I like that the set has different things you can add to it. You can add a little flag to your bike. You can add balloons. I'll be doing some flowers in the front and then a little box with some handmade cards coming out in the back. Now this is a reminder that you can layer your stencils and your stamping and get a one layer card that has no bulk. So it's really easy to mail. In this case, I did the soft sky for the stenciling, and then I'm doing the stamping right on top of it with darker inks. So don't be afraid to layer things up. You don't even have to use a cloud sky, uh, cloud sky here, cloud background. You could do like a fun floral background in soft inks, and it'll still end up being a fun card. So look at your stash and see what layering background stencils you can combine with layering stamps. I also wanted to add some tiny little birds to the sky stamped with black ink, which just kind of pulled some of that dark stamping up towards the top of our background. And this is an older Hero Arts stamp set, but they have a lot of different HeroScape stamp sets with tiny little birds. And then for sentiment, I used an older Wishing You a Wonderful Day sentiment. Now I wanted to add more look of depth to my little bike image here and also add some more pops of color just to make it stand out. So I am using a marker. These are Copic markers, but you could use any markers or colored pencils here. And I'm just adding a little bit of darker color here and there. This is definitely something you can skip, but it does add more look of layering. For example, I'm adding tiny dark pink dots into the center of my flowers in the basket just to make those stand out more. So I did trim that panel down to be four by five and a quarter inches and added it to a white top folding four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. 
I decided to skip adding any embellishments to this. If you wanted to, you could put glossy accents on the bike to give it a bit of shine, but I kept mine perfectly smooth. With the layering stencils in the background and the layering stamps in the foreground, you get the look of dimension. And I added to that dimensional look by doing the layered grass and adding some dark coloring to the bike itself. So this is your reminder to combine your layering stencils and layering stamps together. Okay, let's now use the same layering stencils, but this time take a simple border die cut and add life to it with coloring. Again, this is another way to give that layered look. So I have these three border dies that are included in that Hero Arts premium kit that I showed you earlier. I'm starting with this tree border die and I'm cutting it from white cardstock. I'm cutting it to be taller than needed, but that way I can trim it down later on. It has these parts of the die that stick out on the side that are straight, which just helps you to make sure you line it up on the front of your card straight. I'll use those other two border dies later in this video. So after I've cut that from white cardstock and trimmed the sides and popped out the insides, you could just add this to a cloud background for a really simple, clean card. But I decided this time to add color to this white die cut. I honestly don't do this often because I'm not great at like freehand coloring, but I felt like this was simple enough with the main parts being the grass and the tree. So I'm using my alcohol-based markers. We have Copic markers and Olo markers. I'm just reaching for the colors I like. You could use watercolors, colored pencils, anything you prefer. I start by putting bright, light color down first and then adding darker colors to it. I'm really not doing a lot of blending here because I'm not great at that. Instead, I'm layering a lot of color. And the more color I put down, the more it kind of blends on its own because you're really saturating that paper. So you'll see I started with light and bright and now I'm going to darker colors. And I also, for the grass, tried to make it darker as it went down, just giving a little look of dimension. So this is something that gives a completely different look than what you'll see me do later with the other border dies. In the end, the coloring and the blending isn't fantastic, but it's all about just putting down a lot of color so it'd stand out against my background. Next, I'm using this Hero Arts Wonderful Day stamp set. It actually has a layering stencil set and coordinating die available. I'm just using the sentiment. I want to make this have the same kind of wave as that grass border. So I'm just laying the sentiment down, closing the door on my stamping tool to grab it in the general position I want it. Now I'm taking that border die cut out and putting it behind my open misty door. There are a few different ways to do it, but this is what made sense to me at the time. Now I am bending that stamp and sticking it to the door of the misty so it has the same arch or wave as our grass border. That way, when I go to stamp it, it'll have that matching look. All right, now I can put my border back in and see how it just matches along that. I'll use my anti-static powder tool and then stamp the sentiment with Versamark ink and then add white embossing powder. This will give us a bright white sentiment against that dark green grass. I want this to stand up off of my background for a look of dimension. So I die cut two additional white borders from just some plain white cardstock, and I'm gluing those to the back of our colored one. Now my color one is trimmed down to the size that I want to put on the front of my card. So all of that excess white, I'll just trim off with some scissors. And I'll repeat this with another white layer, so it's three layers thick. You could absolutely do this with foam tape, but you see all those little details like the swing in the tree and the little flowers and bench. It'd be hard to put dimension behind this. So this will give us a lot of strength to the delicate parts of this die cut. I will glue this onto our background, which I've trimmed down to four by five and a quarter inches. And then I added it to a top folding A2 card, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. I did add some little black birds in the sky. Those are tiny little die cuts from an older cloud die set from Hero Arts, and I use them a lot in my sky scenes. Here's a closer look at that fun cloud layering stenciling, and then that border die cut that we added a lot of color to with markers. So this shows you a little reminder of using your layering stencils with your border dies. All right, my next example shows using another of that layering cloud stencil background, but this time with a cover plate. And we're going to do a little bit of simple die cut inlay. I'm telling you, I really like this layering stencil and wanted to mix and match it with as many different products as I could. 
Now, the cool thing about this card is I'm using a lighthouse and sailboat cover plate that is part of Andy's favorites over at Hero Arts website. Andy Granick is a fellow crafter and he is in need of a kidney donation. So to help support him, my son has been doing a give and keep giving uh, fundraising effort. I will put a link up here on the top right if you missed that video. Well, Hero Arts wanted to get involved. So for the month of April and actually through May 7th, Anything that you buy from this list of Andy's favorites, 100% of the profits will go to Off the List, which is an organization that helps folks in need of an organ donation. So I encourage you to check it out. Anything on his list, 100% of the profits will go to a good cause. So I encourage you to do a little bit of shopping. And this Lighthouse cover plate is included on that list. I use the die to cut the die cut that you see there over to the left from white cardstock. I have one of my sky backgrounds, but I'm adding more blue ink, a light amount of blue ink over the whole background. So there's less white in that sky. The reason I'm doing that is when I put this behind the white die cut, I want the white die cut to stand out. So I'm just using a large blending brush, that summer sky ink, and applying a light amount. And that will give more contrast so the white die cut stands out. I could have started with a light blue cardstock and then done the layering cloud stencils on it, but I didn't think of it at the time. So now I'm gluing the white die cut onto the background and then we'll do some inlay. Now usually when I do die cut inlay, I use car colored cardstock, but I thought this time it'd be fun to do a mix. I'm doing some colored cardstock, but I also have that cloud stenciling in the background. So I'll use that die and cut from different pieces of red and brown scraps to color in the lighthouse and the sailboat. I'm not doing a lot of die cut inlay. That's one of the reasons I really like this particular background die. They're just little pieces that you can add. If you wanted to, you could skip the inlay or you can color in the openings with a marker. But in this case, I wanted those bold pops of colors and then that fun sky showing through. For the little waves there, I did two shades of teal cardstock, and then I added some gray into the windows of the lighthouse. To make that white outline die cut stand out even more, I'm gluing two additional die cuts on top. Adding that dimension makes a really big difference in real life and makes it stand out against that busy sky background. Now, I also thought it'd be fun to make the little flag on the top of the sailboat and the birds in the sky to stand out. So I just cut off die cuts from some scraps and I'm gluing them on top. You could use a marker here instead if you prefer. So here I'm cutting off one of the little birds and gluing it on top of that layered white die cut. I really like background dies like this because you can make it uh, very simple if you prefer or you can keep adding to it as I'm doing. And that fun cloud sky background really adds a lot of interest. I considered going back and adding some glitter inside of the clouds. I may do that later. But here I'm changing out the sailboat to a bright blue so it stand out more. Now for sentiment, I went to my sentiment catalog. This is my album full of lots of sentiments. A majority of them are from Hero Arts. And I'm choosing one to add to this card. I love having sentiments ready because it allows me to wrap up my card quickly and use just the right message. If you want to see the video about this album and how I did all these sentiments, I will link to it up here on the top right and at the end of this video. So I added a thinking of you to the bottom of my card and then glued the entire background onto a top folding four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. The sentiment I chose is from the Hero Arts Friendly Messages, Messages Bundle, which I have linked below. So here's a closer look. I really like mixing that layering stencil background along with the solid cardstock. I just think it adds a lot of interest to this card. But remember, you could keep this a simpler design if you prefer. So this is a reminder to use your background dies along with layering stencils for a un fun inlay look. All right, let's change things up and use those border dies that I used earlier, but this time we're gonna create a rainbow out of scraps. Now, if you're not into rainbows, don't worry, you could do this with stripes of any colors you want. 
I'm using this background die that's called the Hero Arts Sentiment Strips. That die actually lines up with some stamp sets that they have to cut out sentiment strips, but I'm just using it to create little quarter inch strips to create our background. I went through my scraps drawer, chose some larger scraps, and I'm cutting out as many as I can. Next, I have pieces of graph paper. This is the graph paper I used to use in engineering. I'll link to the ones that I like below. It's nice and thin, but it has those faint lines, which help me to make sure I keep my strips straight. I have cut two pieces to four and a quarter by five and a half inches, and I'm covering the front with tape runner so that the entire piece of graph paper is covered with adhesive. Now you could use printer paper here, copy paper, anything thin. It's just easier to die cut if that background is thin. I'm starting at the bottom and adding a rainbow of these colorful strips, just making sure I keep them close together. And again, the graph paper just really helps me to make sure I'm continuing to go straight. After I did the whole rainbow, I trimmed off the excess at the top, and I created actually four of these panels so I could make multiple cards. From one, I used the little girl on the bike border die, and I cut right up against the top. From another of the backgrounds, I cut the fence and dog border die towards the bottom of the rainbow stripe. So I have those two pieces all layered together. Because I want that bottom layer uh, border to pop up, I'm gluing additional white die cuts behind it. Again, I prefer this over foam tape because it keeps all those little intricate pieces of the border die cut nice and strong. I did add another layer behind there. So there's two white layers behind the colorful piece. All right, now you could glue these together in a few different ways. You could have them lined up so the stripes are continuous between the two layers, or you could offset them. So here I'm gonna shift it so it's offset a little bit. So you can see how it makes that bottom border stand out a bit more. I ended up lining it up, but this is an option. Now for the background on this one, I wanted to use the clouds, but not do any ink. I want to do glitter texture. So I'm just taking the middle layer of the stencil. So I'm only using the one layer and over it, I'm applying Hero Arts glitter paste. I really like the Hero Arts glitter paste because it has a bit of sparkle, but it's not much. So if you like a bit of sparkle and texture, it's a great option. And if you want more sparkle, you can sprinkle some on, which I'll show here. So I'm spreading that around to get a thin layer, and I'll use my Simon Hurley tool here to smooth right across it. I then will take the excess of the paste and put it back into the jar, and I will immediately clean off my tools, not letting it dry on the stencil or tools. Want to make sure you wash it all off. And by the way, I applied this onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. Now you could give this some time to dry and leave it as is. It'll have this fun textured sparkle to it, but I want even more sparkle. So while it's still wet, I'm sprinkling on some Tim Holtz rock candy glitter. I love this because it looks like sparkly sugar, but it's not like a really um, iridescent glitter at all. It has a very subtle look to it that's just gorgeous and fun on these clouds. After I give it some time to dry, you end up with a sparkle that I can't capture in the camera very well, but it's gorgeous in real life. Now I didn't add any inking to those layering stencils in the background. I wanted the sky to be white except for those glitter clouds. I thought the contrast between that bright white sky and the rainbow border would be fun. If you want the sky to be a little softer, you could have done two layers with a light blue ink and then done glitter for the final layer. Just a different way to use this layering stencil. Just because a layering stencil set has multiple layers doesn't mean you have to use them all. Now I chose a sentiment here to stamp right across the yellow border. I don't wanna mess up at this point. So I took a piece of acetate, it's actually from the packaging, and I laid it over my card and then lined up my stamp. I'm stamping onto that acetate first to make sure I like the position. Then I can remove the acetate and stamp directly on my card. It's really helpful to stamp a practice round on a piece of clear packaging or recycling or acetate first before you stamp on your card. If you're afraid, you might mess up as I was here. I again added some little die cut black birds to the sky from the Hero Arts Cloudy Sky die set. I'll have that linked below.
Here's a closer look at the final card. This was a fun way to use my scraps to use these border dies differently. These two border dies are in the same set as the tree border die I used earlier, but we have two very different looks because of the different techniques that I did. This is a great way to stretch your supplies and get more value from them. And I was able to use that same layering cloud stencil set, but only use one layer and use glitter paste instead of ink. I have two more cards to share with you. Neither of them have a fancy technique, but they're just using up some of the leftover pieces we have. I had a leftover sky background and some leftover stripes, so I did this kite card. I'm using the Hero Arts Kite Fancy Die Set. It's all the dies that you see here on the screen. I'm cutting the main part of the kite from this rainbow piece we made earlier. I actually have room to die cut three kites from this so I can make some more later. I also took one of the cloud backgrounds that I created earlier, trimmed it down and matted it with gray cardstock and added it to a white note card. I also use gray cardstock for the cross part pieces on the kite and for the string. And then I used leftover scraps for the little bows. Here I'm stamping a hello friend sentiment in the bottom right corner and just keeping this very simple. You could add sparkle if you want to, you could add some gems, but I just wanted to allow that fun sky background to show and have that bright kite on top. Nothing fancy to show here, but just a reminder to use your leftovers together, mix and match them to create a new look. All right, I have one bonus card for you. This actually doesn't use the cloud layering stencils. Instead, it uses one of my leftover rainbow pieces. On top of that rainbow piece background, I'm using the Hero Arts Gumball Machine die set. So you can see the dies over there. What I like about this die set is there are three different size gumballs that you can put in the machine. There's big circles, small circles, and then little hearts, which I think are fun. And those little hearts would be great accents on other cards. So I just use scraps to die cut all the pieces and I'm assembling it together, just following the sample on their website. Then I use some of the leftover scraps that I used earlier to create that rainbow background. And I cut little gumballs and glued them in the machine. Here I'm using glossy accents to add a little shine to each of them. I stamped that was very sweet of you from this cherries layering set from Hero Arts. Because I had that rainbow background done already, this card came together pretty quickly. I also wanted to share another idea for this gumball die set. You could cut the uh, glass portion, that kind of round shape there, from a background and have that be a shaker window. So that would only be the only shaker portion and then glue all the other die cut pieces on top and you can put a piece of acetate across the front and have the gumballs move around inside. Now I thought that about that after assembling this card, but keep in mind, this gumball die set would be great for a shaker window. All right, there you have it. Just a bunch of different uh, card examples showing how to mix and match different products together to get more value from what you invest in. If you have interest in the supplies I use, I link them below in my YouTube description. You can also go over to my blog for much more. At the end here, I'll link to a couple other videos I mentioned during this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.